Now let's draw the circle that defines the plastic wall offset from the handle. Let's define a O snap point and using multiple views we'll create that particular circle. Cool. Alright, I'm gonna hide that because for now All I'm interested in are the curves. <clears throat> Keep the handle. Well, actually, we don't need that. Um, hide the 2D profiles. Because at this point, this is all I'm interested in is the head. What I'm going to do is um, take this into. Illustr Illustrator. I'm trying to define a good view right now that might you know, show a lot more of this surface and probably give a good dynamic perspective and I'm going to save that. As um, Lacrosse perspective view. And we're going to save that as an Illustrator format. Hit save and hit OK. Then what I'm going to do is go to the right view and do the same thing. File, export. Now what's nice is that you can actually um, Make sure we have to pick them first and then I'll save as. And the cross view. The cross right view. And what's nice is with the orthographic views is you can preserve the model scale. And hit OK. Now let's start a new document in Illustrator. Set that up for um, tabloid. Yep. Landscape. And we'll open up. the two Illustrator files that were just created. I've done this in Illustrator just so that I have a good idea of what the proportions are going to end up or what it's going to look like in, in reality. group them, move them there, cool. Now I'm going to just take the same files, control C, and take it into Photoshop, make a new document, 17 inches by 11 inches, and RGB is what I prefer to work in because you get more flexibility in the kind of um, filters and commands that are available. I'm going to paste those vector lines as paths and that keeps the same size we had in the Illustrator document and stroke these paths now. <clears throat> if 
first let's make another layer. I'm going to hit B to see what the diameter is there and hit say 2. Looks right. And I'm going to stroke subpath with the brush. Hit OK. Control H to hide it. Neat. Control H to show again. And this time, and we're going to try again. I'm going to right click to get my brush editor. This time I'm going to make it 4 pixels. Cool. And stroke the subpath again. But in this case, simulate pressure. And what that does is it creates a thick point right in the middle and feathers it out towards the edge. You can see it a little bit more clearly here. So that gives you a nice simulated brush stroke. And the reason I did that, um, um, the original thin stroke was that this. Uh, when you simulate brush pressure, it actually feathers out to nothing. So you want to have um, a small uh, line happening in there. And Control H again. And in this case, let's stroke subpath. I'm not as concerned about the brush pressure there. Let's do the same thing here. You can see what happens when you do just a um, pressure simulated brush. It feathers out to nothing. So you really want to have a smaller line to fill up the edges a little bit more. And so you go change your brush setting to 2 and try that again. Stroke subpath, don't simulate pressure. You're good to go. And make sure that we include the ellipse here. All right, cool. Now, this is a, a good start for a template. Um, in general, I, I like to work in gray just to take the edge off of that stark white. So knock that down just a little bit. And let's just create a nice template here. Start the text. And we'll say lacrosse. Um, concepts you know down here you might want to put uh, the name of your firm or your little signature, whatever it is that you do to differentiate your brand. I'm going to make that color maybe a cyan or it looks kind of interesting. Alright, I'm fixated on purple re recently, so let's 